Good morning, Bowtie Nation. Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another one of these Monday market updates, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning. Get you ready for the week. Coming to you Tuesday this week because of the market holiday yesterday, but a great video planned for you. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is out with its 13F regulatory filing showing everything he bought and sold here in the last quarter. Going to be a great insight into what he's buying, what Warren Buffett thinks is a good investment right now. Stick around though, because after that, I'll be highlighting the stocks to watch this week as well as the economic news that's going to guide the market. So be sure to check that out. Before we get started though, I'm teaming up with Thomas Carver to open a new course, Learning to Trade Stocks, a step-by-step -step to the technical analysis, the trading tools that every investor needs. I'm going to link, leave a link in the description below. Click through it. You're going to get a 30% discount. Save over $150 to this course if you've ever held a stock for less than three years, folks. That is, that is the short-term time period. You need to know these technical signals for when to buy and when to sell. Whether you want to make money trading stocks or just want to know when is the right time to buy for a better entry into your long-term investments, this workshop is going to give you everything you need. We cover everything from beginner stock trading topics like trader psychology to what to expect, the market cycles along with charting and the patterns that you're going to need to know for these for this type of investing. Nation, this course will pay for itself within three months of trading. So click through the link I'm going to leave below in the description. You're going to see those 39 videos, including the bonus materials. You're going to find out how to identify stock price targets before they happen, learn the top trading patterns, the indicators that even the professional use, and you're going to get that 30% discount, the 150 dollars off so check that out back to our main topic though because again warren buffett's berkshire hathaway is out with its 13f now this is a regulatory file and it's required of all institutional money managers with more than 100 million dollars in assets they're required to file that within 45 days of the end of the quarter so those three months quarters in january february march april may june july august september october november december that's the fourth quarter october november december uh the regulatory 13f is required to be filed after after each quarter to show what the manager bought, what they sold, changes in their positions. Now they don't say why they did those investments, but you can make those inferences, you can you can make those assumptions and kind of get a look into the thinking, the long-term investment strategy of some of the best investors out there. Now you can always find the 13F or any regulatory filing by going to the S SEC's Edgar database. This is the database that the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, uses to, uh, to house all of its regulatory filings for the public. So you you click through here, then you're going to want to search by company file, company name. So we can put in here Berkshire Hathaway. Click on filings. And now here for that 13F, you're going to look for the 13F-HR Institutional Managers Report. And again, this is going to show all the changes, all the purchases, all the sales of stock during that three months, during that quarter for that institutional fund. Uh, now, there is a warning here that since this isn't required to be filed until 45 days after the end of the quarter, then that is a lot of time to pass between what could potentially be maybe they bought a stock during that first month of the quarter. So the investment theory could change on this stock. Now, for someone like Warren Buffett, who has said his time horizon to hold a stock is forever, you would presume that anything he bought over the last three months he still likes it's still a forever stock for him now warren buffett did not do any new stock buying this last quarter which is kind of uh, kind of unusual even for him he didn't buy any new companies that is he did buy companies already in his portfolio which is a great uh, a great backup to what peter lynch always said that you know sometimes the best stock to buy is one that's already in your portfolio just adding to your positions of the stocks that you already know you already love and you're adding to the positions to build up a, a portfolio of those. So let's look at some of the stocks that Warren Buffett did add to over the last quarter of last year. He did buy 21 million more shares of Apple, ticker AAPL, for a total of 915.6 million shares. Now folks, this is by far the largest investment in the Berkshire Hathaway account. It accounts for 41% of the total portfolio. And now this is a this is like a $350 billion portfolio for Berkshire Hathaway, 41%. Uh, so basically almost half of that is in Apple. It is actually almost 6% of all the Apple shares out there. So Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway owns almost 6% 
of Apple company. Now, Buffett has always said he doesn't believe in diversification, right? Doesn't believe in spreading spreading his investments out. He prefers instead to bet the farm pretty much, to bet a lot and focus on just a few companies that he believes in. And obviously this is coming through with Apple, 41% of the portfolio. Apple is a proven winner, though I'm kind of worried about the supply chain issues with its China production. You know, uh, Apple produces 36% of its total production in China. You've, we've got those geopolitical problems between the U.S. and China. Um, you know, China is not a market economy. They are a controlled economy. So you always have to kind of worry about that. I also wonder if shares aren't just a little bit too expensive right now. The shares of Apple trade for 6.4 times on a price to sales basis. That is above the 5.6 times average over the last five years. So shares of Apple are trading relatively more expensive right now than they have been over the last five years and more than double the 2018 valuation. So we go back to 2018, we saw, see that Apple was traded at about, about 2.9 times on that price to sale. So right now, shares of Apple are more than double that valuation. So you've got to worry about kind of their product life cycle. Are they going to be able to refresh the new iPhones, the laptops, uh, all those new products each year or at least regularly to get customers to come back and, and pay those higher costs, actually. Buffett also added 1.2 million shares of Louisiana Pacific. That's ticker LPX. It gives him more than 10% of the company. So Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway, through its portfolio there, owns more than 10% of Louisiana Pacific. Uh, shares of this home building products company surged during the pandemic. Obviously, you know, uh, housing did very well during the pandemic. People were buying houses and uh, prices were going up, but have gone nowhere for the last two years. Okay, these shares have just flatlined over the last two years with the slowdown in new home construction and the housing market. Analysts are expecting sales to be down 25% this year and 30% just in the quarter that they're going to report this week. So earnings are going to come out this week. Uh, that could be bad news if they report that 30% plus earnings uh, drop. Um, maybe Buffett is thinking that the slowdown is already priced into the stock, but I'm not quite sure. You know, I think it still has further to fall. I don't think uh, home construction is going to be picking up anytime soon with those higher interest rates and still higher to come. We're going to see mortgage rates keep on going up and and that's just going to hurt the housing market. Berkshire also added to its stake in Paramount Global, ticker P-A-R-A. -A. It's now worth one and a half billion. It's total of about 15% of this company. So again, we do see that not only does Berkshire focus on just singular companies within its portfolio, it buys large stakes in those companies. That is a 15% ownership of Paramount Global. And here he's just, he's betting on that advertising revenue rebound for streaming stocks that, and that Paramount can compete in this competitive industry. Okay. So last year with the uh, fear of a recession, a lot of companies, they pulled back on their advertising spending that obviously hit any kind of media company, Paramount Global, it hit Facebook, the social media companies, Google, any company that makes its money off that advertising revenue from other companies took a big hit last year. Berkshire is betting that that rebounds this year with a, uh, with you know maybe missing a a recession companies start advertising more again and and that money goes back to those uh, to those companies uh, shares of paramount are now, now trading relatively cheaply though 0.52 times sales they pay a four percent dividend you know i think i actually prefer warner brothers and disney in the streaming space and warner brothers discovery does have the uh, just as much content as paramount they have a little bit cheaper content to produce uh, in that discovery segment i think that's one of my biggest fears right Right now is this just this race in streaming stocks to produce this content between Netflix, Disney, Paramount, Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, it is getting extremely expensive to produce all this content for these. We've seen that in Netflix, especially where it's costing so much to produce the new content that they are just kidding getting reamed on those profits. Profits are going down because of that. Uh, I like Disney because it's got the not only the theme parks, the TV uh, studios, as well as the movie studios and the streaming. So it's a little bit more diversified than some of these pure streaming stocks. What's maybe even a little bit more telling is that Warren Buffett actually did more selling than buying last quarter. He sold a lot of the stocks, some of them just before the rebound this year. He did cut shares of Chevron, even though it's still in the top five positions for the portfolio. So still a very large stake in Chevron. He he stole, sold shares of McKesson, Kroger, U.S. Bancorp, Bank of America, or Bank of New York, 
Ally Financial, and Activision Blizzard. Now that cut of Activision Blizzard is a turnaround from trying to make an arbitrage gain on the pending acquisition of Microsoft. Okay, so a little over a year ago, Microsoft announced that it had reached a deal with uh, the management of Activision Blizzard to buy the company to integrate it into Microsoft. Now that deal has come under scrutiny by the US and EU regulators saying that it would give Microsoft some kind of a, uh, a monopoly control in the gaming market and uh, and they're going to contest it you know so that might be called off that could send shares of activision plunging though the longer term outlook is good here you know uh, there are positive trends in gaming uh, gaming is going to be monetized more in the future i believe and that is going to uh, that is going to help activision blizzard i think it's what uh, microsoft was looking at when it made that acquisition and i would be buying on any big drops here in this stock buffett's biggest change though was in his run from shares of taiwan semiconductor ticker tsm he sold almost all of his stake in this company 51.8 million shares that's about 86 percent of his previous position and that's in less than three months after buying them so the short term horizon was very odd very confusing considering buffett's long-term focus on investing right he did book a gain on the position but shares are still 35 percent from the 2022 peak you know he hasn't given any reason for selling those but you know investors are really just kind of assuming two choices you know either he's worried about those geopolitical tensions with china over Taiwan, or he sees just a tough time ahead generally for semiconductor companies, or both. If you ever want to check out Warren Buffett's portfolio there, CNBC does have a Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway tracker. It's a great tool. It doesn't show you the changes in each, but it will show you the percent of the portfolio in each stock. It'll show you the value, the market price, the stake they have in the company. So for example, here you see top pick here, Apple, 41.4% of the Berkshire Hathaway portfolio. Again, that is that is just crazy. Almost half of that portfolio is in one stock. Uh, it's 5.8% of the Apple company. That is almost $140 billion in this one company alone. Now, he continues to be heavily focused on these top five stocks. It's a 47 stock portfolio, but in five stocks alone is 76% of the, of the entire $342 billion portfolio. That's in Apple, Bank of America, Chevron, Coca-Cola, and American Express. Now, I want to turn it over to this week's market update. First, some of the stocks I'm watching this week, some big earnings coming out this week. Alibaba, ticker BABA. It's about the only China share I own, probably the only one I would touch right now with those geopolitical Political tensions. It's going to report its earnings on Thursday and could give some of the first clues into China's reopening economy uh, in the company's current quarter outlook. Okay, shares are down 17% from the January rebound. So there in October, it uh, it hit the lows. It started rebounding and went al almost up to $120 per share. It's now down 17% from that just over the last month. It's still up 57% from the October low and, and trading for a pretty attractive 2.1 time sale. So this stock is relatively cheap uh, you know, against its history. In fact, stock has fallen so much lately that Perma Bear Michael Burry, okay, the big short guy himself, uh, you know, Cassandra from, from Twitter, he is actually buying the shares, uh, which is it's pretty rare because he doesn't buy anything. He's always selling. He's always warning of big market crashes, but he is positive on shares of Alibaba. Looking at the bigger picture here, what the stocks in each sector did, we're on the sectorspider.com. Great resource, this, uh, this sector tracker to show you what stocks in each stock sector did that, that larger, bigger picture of the economy. We're here on the last five days for last week, and we can see that five of the 11 stock sectors did close higher last week, even though the uh, the overall market, the S&P 500 there, closed a little more than a quarter of a percent lower. We did see strength in communication services and consumer discretionary, which is a little surprising. You know, Both of those closed in positive territory. We had uh, about 0.71% up in communication services, 1.6% up in com consumer discretionary discretionary. That was the best performing sector last week. Now, normally you would expect these sectors to fall along with the rest of the market because they are that economically sensitive sectors. They tend to follow the economy. They tend to follow the market up or down. Strength in the communication services sector came on the back of really strong earnings from those streaming companies. We talked about that with Warren Buffett's portfolio. Uh, Warner Brothers and Paramount were both up more than 8.5% over the last week. So really seeing a rebound in those streaming companies. The strength in consumer discretionary was largely on the back of Tesla. You can click through any of these. If we click through consumer discretionary for last week, we do see that Tesla 
is 15% of that group. So a big weighting factor in Tesla for that group, it was up 5.8%. So that really pulled the entire sector up. So, you know, a consumer, consumer discretionary might not have been quite as strong as it appears from that 1.6% up last week, just because Tesla kind of skewed it higher, kind of pulled everyone else higher. If we do avoid a recession this year, and if you look at these double digit rebounds in these economically sensitive stocks like communication services, like technology, the market does believe we're going to avoid a recession this year. The banks will have billions of dollars in those loan loss reserves that are going to juice earnings higher. Okay, they're not going to need those loan loss, loan de default reserves on the balance sheet. They're going to bring that money back into the income statement and boost earnings up uh, surprisingly high, and that's going to drive these stock prices. Um, again, these stocks are still relatively attractive. With those interest rates higher than more than a decade, banks could be coming into an era of profitability that we haven't seen it in more than 40 years. Okay, if, on the other hand, we do see a recession, banks are still going to have those loan loss reserves to mitigate that damage to earnings, and, and the shares should hold up against what could be another painful drop in these sectors. It's another heavy week for earnings. Lots of companies coming out with their earnings next week, but light on economic data until we get to Friday in the personal consumptions expenditures, that PCE report. Now, that's what the Fed watches as its measure of inflation. That's what the market's going to be waiting for, and it could be a big one for this week. You know, after the surprisingly high CPI, the consumer Consumer price index and the PPI, the producer price index reports last week, really spooked the markets that yes, inflation is coming down, but not nearly as fast as the market would like, not nearly as fast as it has been. A lot of people uh, talking about how the Fed might have to raise interest rates even more and uh, and hold them there for longer. So slowing down the economy even further to bring inflation down. Several Fed members, including Mester and Bullard, last week talking about a half a percent interest rate hike at its next meeting. Next meeting for the Fed is March 22nd, talking about a half point uh, increase rather than the quarter of a point that they've been doing over the last couple of meetings. We can look here at the CME Fed Watch Tool. Now, this uses the futures market to kind of put a probability on FOMC, so Federal Open Market Committee of Rate Moves, how much the market thinks or expects the Fed is going to raise rates here in the different meetings of this year. We can see here for February or for March 22nd is the next meeting. We've got the current target rate is 450 to 475 for the federal funds rate. Now that is the rate that the Federal Reserve sets. That's kind of the benchmark for other rates to uh, go higher or lower. Now we can see that the, the odds are still for a quarter of a percent move, right? 475 to 500 on that Fed funds rate, 82% almost right now. But we can see the differences here. We can see the 18%, there's an, about an 18% probability that the Fed does come out with a super move, a half a percent rate hike instead of that quarter percent. Now that could spook the markets because the markets is, is gonna have to come to the realization that the Fed is serious about increasing interest rates, slowing down the economy. We can see that's 18% here. And we can look at where that's at, the probability on the futures market that that is at right now compared to in the past. And we can see that just a month ago, the market was only expecting that half a percent rate hike in March there, only about two and a half percent odds. That has grown to 18%. So really what we've seen and just over the last week, that has doubled. The odds on that just over the last week has doubled from 9% to 18%. And so what we know here is that with those surprisingly high CPI and PPI inflation reports, the market is now expecting a much bigger possibility that the Fed comes out with its bazooka and raises rates by a half a percent here on March 22nd. And so waiting for that PCE report, that personal consumption expenditures report on Friday, that could clench it. You know, if it comes out higher than expected, like we saw with the CPI, with the producer price index last week, uh, that's going to spook the markets with the potential for those higher interest rates for longer, what it could mean for the economy and what it could mean for stock market earnings. Remember to get your discount out on that trading tools course save hundred and fifty dollars with the link below or click on the video to the right to see the seven stocks i'm buying now for the next 30 years my forever stocks don't forget to join the let's talk money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification